Hi, I'm Chris, that running guy. I'm really excited to share this shoe with you. It's the Socony Endorphin Pro 2 in this stunning campfire orange. Is this a super shoe that can compete with the likes of Vapor Flies and Alpha Flies? So why did I choose this shoe? Well, I'm gonna look at this from a, a different perspective. I've only worn Nikes for the past three years. As you may or not know, I didn't get on with the Vaporfly. The Zoom X was too soft. I'm a bit of a hill striker and it caused me to pick up an injury. So I haven't actually got a super shoe. You know, I've got Zoom Fly 3s, I've got Tempo Next Percents. Alpha Flies are steer clear of because they're only a formal drop. So I needed that super shoe. On reviews on YouTube, it's up there. You know, it's compared with, with the best. So how does it feel on foot? Well, it's true to size. I'm a UK size 11 in Nikes, 11 in this one. Very easy to get on. It's got this kind of mesh upper and this kind of inbuilt tongue um, that kind of wraps around like a sock. It's got a full carbon plate. It's got speed roll technology, which basically means a rocker. And it's got a carbon rubber to make it lighter and more durable. It's got nice support on the heel, not too much there. And as you can imagine, very lightweight or 7.5 ounces in a size nine. And it's a perfect transition for anyone thinking about going from Nike to Socony. Reason being, it's an eight mil drop. Nikes are typically eight to 10. It's a neutral shoe, uh, stack height, similar to Nikes. To be honest, the information out there does vary. So can you say 35.5, everyone else says 39. So to transition over from Nike, it's actually using the similar foam. It's using the Piba foam, which is using Zoomex, but this is put together slightly differently. It's put together in kind of small, so we call them circles, hexagons, and it looks more like um, ultra boost material. Uh, it's supposed to be more durable, um, because I don't know if, you, if you've if you ever got Nikes out of the box, they tend to have kind of crease lines and the more you wear them, the deeper that crease gets. This is supposed to be a lot more durable, it's supposed to get about 300 miles and especially with this kind of carbon rubber that's quite hard. So today, I thought to myself, as I said before, I'm going to take it out on that 5k run. As soon as I went out on the warm up, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was a little bit disappointed. Wasn't that bouncy, wasn't overly comfortable. Yes, the lockdown was great, um, wasn't no rubbing, but it just didn't feel, I don't know, it didn't feel like a super shoe, it just felt quite flat. I was running at my warm up pace, which is 7.45 per mile, but as soon as I did some strides, it come alive. You know, it is a racing shoe, it's not for daily training, so, you know, it's lighter than any of the other models and that's what it's for, for racing. And so it feels most comfortable when you're going fast. You know, it wants you to land on this area and that kind of rocker or whether we call it the speed roll and the carbon plate wants you to land here and transition. And when you're running in it, you don't actually feel this area. Um, yes, you, you're still towing off, but it just feels like you hit and then you propel off. How did I get on once I started the run? Well, as I say, it was raining and we all know in the UK it rains a lot. And with some of these super shoes, are they gonna be slippery? And to be honest, this carbon rubber hasn't got much grip on it, but the traction was fantastic. The only surface it slipped on, which I think most do shoe, is when you get that uneven tarmac you know, when it kind of sticks out and it's bobbly and they haven't rolled it down flat or metal drain covers. I tested it before I went for the run because I wanted to, you know, if you've had Nikes, turn around sharp corners, stack kites high, Zoom X kind of folds over and you're a bit kind of wobbly. But even in the wet on sharp corners, I say stability, traction was brilliant. All right, so back to the 5K, how did I get on? Well, my plan was, to go for 19, 30 to sub 25K. Um, 
Breathing wise, I've been struggling all week, so I didn't know how I was gonna perform. Slightly undulating course. So I went off aiming for kind of 615, 620. Got through the first mile in 618. The next mile, um, looked at my watch and it was in the 630s. So I picked up the pace and managed to claw that one back to 620. And then the last mile, I was struggling kind of breathing wise and thought, I'm losing pace here, you know, I'm slowing down, slowing down. But when I looked at my watch, I was constant at 6.07 for a long period of time. And almost like I got into a rhythm and, you know, I was constantly, felt like I was hitting on, on this area. I was probably hill striking, but, you know, that's what I do. But I, I felt like I was going through the cycle well. I felt that it was propelling me forward. Um, wanting me to run in this area. I felt that was economical, but then looking back at the stats, when I compare it to my Zoom Fly 3s or my Tempo Next Percent, I was still getting the same stride length of one meter 52 and cadence anywhere between 170 to 180. So I wasn't gaining there. But, you know, when you're doing these reviews, you're kind of thinking in your mind, how are my legs feeling? And it was undulating. I didn't get any Achilles pain, not even going up the hills. My legs felt strong. Um, there was, I don't know, I've had it before where, you know, you, you, my calf might start to hurt or my thighs are starting to hurt. It was just my breathing was letting me down today. So all in all, first impressions, fantastic. I know this is just a racing shoe and you know, I'm not going to get to use it much. You know, it's a £200 shoe in the UK. You know, it's not cheap. And I will just save it for racing. And that was the purpose of why I got it. So, what's my kind of final thoughts to you? Well, if you are a Nike fan, then this is a perfect shoe to transition. I think you could just transition straight over with, with no injuries. To say, similar drop, similar foam. I'm going to put it out there. I am actually considering, well not considering, I think I will when I can afford it, is to transition over to Saucony. And say the speed it is obviously, you know, not a full racer, more of a kind of tempo shoe. And they've got some obviously lesser models. So I'm tempted to kind of transition over because say I didn't have any pain whatsoever in my Achilles. So I think it's a fantastic shoe. I think it is definitely a shoe that if you are a Nike fanboy or you're looking for a shoe that's going to be comfortable at the higher paces and racing and, and fast, I've seen that maybe it's not a marathon racer, maybe it's kind of 5, 10k, half marathon, then I think this is the shoe for you.